What's going on everybody, Kleepas Tech here, coming back at you with another video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G's camera setup to give you a better idea of what it can do and whether or not it's good enough for your needs. As always, if you want to learn more about this phone, including information about pricing, availability, and some of the best accessories for it, definitely check out the various links in the video description. But otherwise, let's get right into it. So starting off with the selfie camera here, with the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro, we're getting a typical water drop notch selfie camera. The camera itself is 16 megapixels, so in general, definitely not bad. It's not going to be the greatest camera ever, but for what it is, it will at least get the job done. That being said though, one thing about this selfie camera that really just doesn't make sense is that for whatever reason, it can't use portrait mode. Now why they did this, I really couldn't say, but just keep in mind, if you're expecting to have portrait mode in the front facing camera, which is pretty reasonable to expect in 2023, honestly, since pretty much every phone does. Unfortunately with this phone, we're not getting that feature. Now here's a photo taken with the selfie camera. In general, it's definitely not a terrible picture. And in general for like vacation photos, stuff like that, even something like Snapchat, this camera is going to get the job done perfectly fine. And I would even say if you're taking pictures you want to keep for something, obviously in terms of quality, you can technically do better. But if you're just taking pictures more for personal use, your memories, stuff like that, and you're not doing any serious content creation, for example, then again, I do think the photo quality we're getting here is at least going to be acceptable. That being said though, keep in mind if you're trying to really get the best photo quality you can for the price, there are several other phones around this general price range that have significantly better photo quality like for example the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G. Here's a picture taken with the selfie camera of that phone. Again, significantly better quality, the colors pop a lot more, the lighting is a bit more accurate, and things just look higher quality in general. So if you're going to be doing a lot of social media posts and stuff like that, then you might want to consider getting a phone like this instead. And just to give you an idea of the current price difference, I mean here's the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G on Metro's website. Website, and here's the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro. So compared to the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro, it's not like the Samsung Galaxy A23 5G is really massively higher end or anything. And my point to all this is, if you're really trying to get the best photo quality you can for the money, then yeah, in this price range, you can technically do better. But again, like I was saying before, the photo quality here, despite not having portrait mode, unfortunately, is really not that bad. And if you just want to snap a couple selfies here and there for more casual purposes, then this camera will get the job done. Now, moving on to the rear camera setup, we actually have some pretty good features here. As you can see, it is a quad camera setup and we got a 50 megapixel main camera, a 5 megapixel ultra wide camera, a 2 megapixel macro camera, and a 2 megapixel depth sensing camera. So yeah, although you can't use portrait mode in the front facing camera, we do at least have portrait mode in the rear camera. So if you are taking a lot of pictures and you want all the different features you typically get in an entry level to mid range phone, then you're probably going to be pretty happy with the setup. Now here's a whole bunch of photos taken with the main camera. It's interesting here because depending on the lighting and the actual setting, the photo quality here is really hit or miss. And the really bright lighting, the colors look good, the details are nice, and overall the photo is pretty usable. But on the other hand, when things are a bit darker, it's not bad per se, but things aren't nearly as good, and of course, this goes for pretty much any camera, but I feel like it is a little bit more so with this one. And another thing I do want to point out is that with these photos, the lighting isn't necessarily that accurate. Like with these couple photos, for example, things were actually super bright that day. And again, things do look at least decent here, I'm not saying it's terrible. But if we're really being picky here, I mean, some of you are in a situation where you have to get the best photo quality you can, maybe you're content creator for example, or maybe you're a real estate agent and you have to get photos of a home. In that kind of situation, you are going to want things to look as good as they can. And while these photos are going to be perfectly fine for more casual personal use like vacation photos, the occasional Instagram post here and there, and stuff you're just keeping for your memories, if you have maybe more of a professional need to get higher quality photos, I do honestly think that at this point in 2023, especially with the deals and promotions carriers are offering, there are several phones around this general price range that take much better photos. So while again, for personal casual use, the quality we're getting here is decent and most people will be able to live with it just fine. If you are in a situation where you really have to get more high quality, interesting, professional looking photos, just keep in mind you can easily get a phone with a much better camera without spending a ton of money on a higher end device. Now one really good thing I do want to point out about these photos is that probably thanks to having a 50 megapixel camera, the details are actually really sharp. So unlike a lot of the lower end carrier branded phones that have kind of grainy looking photos, things are really crisp here. So again, for something like a vacation photo, a casual Instagram, Instagram posts, stuff like that, I definitely do think it will be okay and you most likely won't have any problems. Really the two main issues here are first of all the way the camera handles lighting. For the most part I feel like the pictures end up looking quite a bit dimmer than they should. So if you're taking pictures on a really nice day for example this can be a little disappointing. And on the other hand in pictures like this one for example things look a little bit overexposed and that of course is not going to be a good thing either. And then with the colors things are definitely on the dull side from what I'd like to see. Sure again the pictures do technically look perfectly fine for the most part but things just don't 
don't pop out a whole lot, there's really not a ton of life in the photos. So while some pictures and some angles are still going to look really good, if you're maybe a content creator, for example, and you're trying to get nicer, more aesthetically pleasing kind of photos, then while it's definitely still possible to get those nice photos, it's going to take a little bit more effort and probably some editing to get things to really stand out. So in general, when it comes to this main camera, is it bad? Definitely not. I do think for a lot of people, it really will be all you actually need. But just keep in mind, if the camera really is an important part of what you do with your phone, and you actually want to get the best photo quality you can for the money, then you can do better. Now moving on to the ultra wide camera, I do think for what it is, considering what we just talked about with the main camera, things actually do look pretty good here. Sure, there is some visible distortion around the edges. Things do bend a bit, which is pretty typical with any ultra wide camera, but I still don't think it's really that distracting from the actual picture. And if you're not really looking for any imperfections, I do think the pictures look perfectly fine. That being said though, a few things to keep in mind here, which are probably not going to be too surprising, but as you can see, the details aren't nearly as sharp as they are with the main camera, which with an ultra wide camera, of course, is to be expected. The colors and lighting are also a tiny bit worse, not really by that much. But in my opinion, with the ultra wide camera, things do look a little bit more dull. And then again, with the brightness and exposure, with things being a little underexposed or overexposed, it's a bit more noticeable here as well. Now here's some pictures taken with portrait mode. On one hand, in my opinion, I feel like unless you're using a $50 phone, portrait mode, no matter what device you're using, is going to be at least decent no matter what. But regardless, with this phone, it does look really nice. The blur effect works really well. Things do look professional. So in general, if you're taking pictures for maybe Instagram, for example, and you want to get that nice portrait effect, then you really won't go wrong with this phone. Again, it really would have been nice to get portrait mode in the front facing camera too, but for what it is, I'm glad that at least with the rear camera, things do look pretty good. Now here's some pictures taken with the Mac camera, not really the best quality, but if you really do want to get those close up detailed images, I mean, it does get the job done. But if the macro camera is a really important feature to you, which I feel like it's probably not for a lot of people, but if it is, then keep in mind, honestly, even for what it is, the photo quality we're getting with the macro camera really isn't that great. Now, before we wrap this up, I want to talk about the video quality. With this phone, we actually have a max recording quality of 2K in the rear camera and 1080p in the front. So while in my opinion, at least 2K isn't really that crazy useful or anything, it is still a a little bit more on the unique side that with the phone in this price range, you do actually get the option to record videos in a resolution higher than 1080p. So if that is something that's important to you, then this can definitely be a good thing. Now the actual video quality as far as how it looks goes is okay, it's definitely not the best, but it's not the worst either. I mean, it is usable for sure. But if you're doing something like a YouTube video, vlog, something like that, where you want higher quality and you really want things to stand out, then you can definitely do better than this. But like a lot of things with this phone, if you are using it for more casual purposes and you're not too concerned about getting the best quality you can possibly get, then in that case, it still will get the job done. But in conclusion, my overall thoughts about this phone's camera setup. Now, like I've been saying throughout this video, there are really two sides to this. On one hand, for more personal casual use, if you're taking pictures for like Instagram every now and then, or maybe like vacation photos and things you're really just going to keep for your own memories, or maybe something like Snapchat where the quality doesn't really even matter, and that kind of situation for again more personal use, you're really not going to go wrong with this camera. Sure, it doesn't have the most amazing quality or interesting looking photos in the world, but it does have plenty of features including an ultra wide camera and a macro camera, and the pictures while not being the best are still okay. So for the money, again, if you don't really need a crazy good camera, and you're really just taking a few photos every now and then, this phone is going to be perfectly fine. That being said though, if you're maybe more of a content creator or you just want to get the best photo quality you can without spending a ton of money on a higher end device in that kind of situation, there are still plenty of phones around this price range that simply just have better cameras. So again, while this camera is definitely usable, if you really do want to get the best quality for the money, you can still do better. But this concludes my camera review for the T-Mobile Revel 6 Pro 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the video description where we'll be linking to several other videos about this phone, as well as some information about price pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipa's Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.